we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Living Father, the dirty, filthy sins in our heart, there are so many of them. Thank you that you teach us this. The heart where we hate to keep you in our heart, this wrong heart, thank you for pointing this out. And may we wash it all with the blood of Christ. So even if the whole universe comes into my heart, may we be servants of power who can rule over. Rule over it all. What is it that I'm tied up to? Am I tied up to a few dollars? Am I tied up to a good name? Am I tied up to power? May we be able to rule over and subdue everything. Whatever seat you give us. It's not me that does it, but may we depend on you. May we be children who can handle it all. May we obey the word and we believe we will receive these blessings. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please repeat after me, sheep. You know what sheep means, don't you? Matthew chapter 25. It means um, it, it means to go to heaven, but it's not just to go to heaven. A sheep sees all of the world as theirs, so they don't have grumblings. In your heart, if you have grumblings, excuses, complainings, Jude chapter 1 verse 16, it means you don't have faith. If you don't have faith, then there's sin inside of you. So what does it mean if there's sin inside of you? Well, that means I'm tied up to being a slave to sin. So if you have grumblings, excuses, that means that's how small your heart is. Someone who's tied up to money, they can't receive money blessings. So if you're tied up to that money, if you're a slave to it and God gives you money, then you'll die because of that money. So God wants to give us unlimited blessings. He says, what won't I give you? Romans chapter 8 verse 32. He says he'll give you everything. So then why can't I receive? Because you're tied up to money, you can't receive money blessings. Because you're tied up to something, that's why you can't receive that. It's because you're tied up to it that you can't receive it. Well, why do you have problems? It's because of what you're tied up to. God, he created all of creation, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. He gives it to us all and he says, you rule over it, you subdue it. So let's have that heart. Let's find Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Why? Well, if you do forced out repentance, your heart, it becomes unlimited. Almighty God, who is omnipresent, who is high exalted, this Almighty One's heart, my heart changes to become God's heart. So then, it's a heart where I can have all things. It's to that person that God gives everything. So Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. So God, who is in the midst of our hearts, in order to fulfill His will, as much as you repent, He moves your heart. So amongst the sermons, you know, if someone brings hundreds of thousand dollars, I treat it as a toy. You know, people bring hundreds of thousand dollars and I treat it as if it's some dried up leaves. You know, if I have the whole universe, then of course, when that's brought to me, I should see it just as dried up leaves. If I'm like, wow, what a treasure. That's that's not someone who has the whole universe. If you say, oh, I didn't have, even have money to buy ramen noodles. Even if you don't have that money, if your heart is where you say the whole universe is mine, that's when God gives you blessings. If you do four step repentance, you don't have, your greed disappears. But it's when you say everything is mine. If the whole world is mine, that's when your greed disappears. Why would you have greed? It's when you say it's not mine that you have greed. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21 to 23. Why do you have jealousies? It's when your heart is so small. That's when you have 
jealousies. If your heart is unlimitedly big, then you don't have jealousies. Oh, that person's doing well. Oh, he's doing well for me to do well. So according to the word, if your heart grows, that person's success is for me to do well. That's why he succeeds. So why would you be jealous? It's because I'm not doing according to God's word. That's why I'm tied up to envyings, jealousies. I'm so sad and I'm filled with um, revenge and oh, that person's done well. Yes, of course. They need to do well for me. Oh, that person's ruined. Oh, they're ruined for me. So everything's for me. The whole world is for who? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. You say, oh, it's for me. But then you say, it's not for me because you're saddened. Oh, it didn't come to me, went over there. Whether it's over here or over there, it's all mine. So if you have a, a 10 meter house, if it goes outside of that, then you say it's someone else's. You know, if it's in there, you say, oh, where is it? Oh, it's in that big room. Oh, oh it's okay. Where is it? It's in, my, it's in the small room in my house. Oh, that's okay then. But once it goes outside, you're like, oh no, I've been robbed. I've lost it. So if the whole universe is my house, have you lost it? So you know this. So when God tests you to give you blessings, you fail. But then when I ask you, it seems like you know, but once you're about to receive blessings, then you don't know. So I, if I was God, I'd be like, why are you like this and that? But if you don't repent properly without you realizing that's what you become. God, he gives us unlimitedly. Do you believe this? He gives us unlimitedly. So then what's not, what's not right? It's my heart. So if you do force to repentance, this has nothing to do with you. But there are people who after they win the lottery, they die. It's not just in our country, overseas too. So if you win the lottery, how, many, how much money is that? Maybe you'll get 5 million. They probably don't even give that much. But there are people who they don't even get to receive it and they're like Ugh, and they die they die because of a heart attack that person's heart in a dish that can't even receive one million because they receive five million for free they die god he doesn't want to give to you for you to die he wants to make you worthy to receive that's why he, he, you have to keep growing your heart i can't do it you know, I'm holding on to this tiny bean. Because you're sitting there holding on to this, everything beyond this, you feel saddened. You're like, how could this be? You grumble. Your pride's hurt. And this is why you can't receive blessings. After you do forced out repentance, if your dish is always clean, there's nothing. If you have the best car, then you feel at peace. But if it's not, then you don't. That's because you haven't repented enough. This is why you can't receive blessings. Oh, if I ride that car, my pride's hurt. If you have pride, have you repented or not? No. God says to be thankful in all things. This is God's will. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. So it's when this is thankful, that is thankful. It's when everything is mine that you're thankful. Even when you put something in the trash can, you don't just put it in. You think, oh, can I use this again before you put it in? Because even though it's old, it's still mine. So even that old thing, because it's mine, you're still happy to hold on to it. But if it's someone else's, even if it's something better, you, you, you don't feel like it's that great. So God wants to give you unlimitedly. But it's because my heart's like this, that's why I can't receive blessings. So at this time, do you believe that God's created all of the creation and given it to me to rule over? So what have we found? So it's talking about how we have our hearts. Let's read it. For as he thinks within himself, so he is. He says to you, eat and drink, but his heart is not with you. Amen. So even though we're sitting here together in the same place, according to our hearts, we're all different. 
It's according to our hearts. But if you do force that repentance, our hearts become one. You rule over the, the universe. I rule over the universe. We're all the same. It's to that person that blessings come. Someone who rules over the whole universe. It's not to miss out, to, to have America missed out or the Soviet Union missed out. So whoever the president is of America or the Soviet Union, who is it for? So you know. So you know, but why do you say, oh, but I'm poor? Does a rich man get to eat 10 bowls? If you read Ecclesiastes chapter 5, no. The rich man eats one bowl and the poor man eats one bowl. It's, it's according to your heart. So what's the heart of a rich man versus a poor man? Let's find Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10. So God's put the blessings in front of us and he tells us to take them. But why can't we receive? It's because of our hearts. Let's say someone gives you $5 million. You're like, <gasps> that's someone whose heart is still so small. How can you say that the whole universe is mine? If you're tied to money and you don't have freedom, it's because what? If the Holy Spirit doesn't come, you don't have that freedom. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. If the Holy Spirit comes, your heart has freedom. If you continue to do four-step repentance, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, He gives you the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, then your heart is freed. If you have freedom, you're not tied up to money or, or a good name or uh, power. Today, let's expand it. You know, how much does God want to give us blessings that he says, surely receive blessings? That's Hebrews chapter 6, verse 14. That's how much he wants to give to us. Why can't we receive? You know, when we ask for blessings, you just ask for enough money to buy a chocolate at the corner store. So let's say your child's become 50. Um, the father's 70 years old. The wife is 48. And so the son comes and says, Dad, give me 50 cents to buy a chocolate. At age 50, how, how can that be? And you think, oh, what, how can they be such an idiot? But what about you and I? He's given us all of the universe to rule over. How is it? You talk about, oh, my room's small or big. No matter how big it is, big it is. How big would it be? No matter how small it is, how small it would be. It's it's so pathetic. Let's fix our hearts. The Father says, "I'll do to you according to your heart. According to your heart, that's how much of a man you are." So why is my destiny destiny like this? That's what your heart is. So let's make this whole universe mine. Let's stretch it out. The whole universe is mine. So that's what God's given from the beginning. So we read Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Even though we're all here together, we're all different. Today, let's, make, let's become one. So God so wants to give blessings. Why can't I receive? Because my heart is wrong. Even though I tell you this, soon when you're saying something, you know, you're... You find some dropped noodle in the in the drain, and then you start fighting about that. So if you're doing that, when God looks at you, He's like, "That's what you know. A rat should be picking up. Why are you nitpicking about that? You're, you know, you're the, you know, that's that's your heart." So let's find Genesis chapter one verse twenty six. So God. He gives everything now, but if you can't fix your heart, all the blessings that you receive so far, they can't grow. So Joseph, he was a slave in Potiphar's house. Even though he was a slave, he never thought of himself as a slave. Because God is with me, I am the slave of God. It's when you're a servant of a slave of God, that's when you're a, a slave of Christ. That's when 
It's when you're a, a servant, a slave, that you can be chosen. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1. So, so this is when you can become a servant of power, where you can receive money blessings, where you can rule over the universe, whatever you pray for, you can receive. So that's how important it is. Our, so our heart, the way we have our heart, that's what's important. But what comes out of our heart? Seven sins. That's Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. This is what comes out of our heart. Where there is sin, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, demons stick. So because demons are filling me up, I don't know how to rule over the world. Demons, they're filled with greed, stubbornness. They only seek their own profit. They're a beast. So because of this thinking, on this earth. That's why God can't give blessings. So if we wash this with the blood of Christ, we wash it away. Then Jesus Christ enters. God enters. So if God comes in, then I can see the world as mine. Oh, that person has nothing to do with me. Oh, that's Mr. Choi. That's Mr. Lee. That has nothing to do with me because I'm a Mr. Park. Already, this type of thinking is a blessing where you can't receive, is a thinking where you can't receive blessings. But when you see that person as me, when you say that's me, If you, even if this, if you can do this, this is God's new commandment that you treat up your neighbor as yourself. It's your neighbor as yourself. So if someone's starving and I'm eating, you say, oh, it's as, it's as my body. If you don't feel anything, then your heart hasn't changed. And that's why Mark chapter 12, verse 30 to 31, the new commandment is to treat your neighbor as yourself. If you have the heart where your neighbor is yourself, so if your right hand, your left hand, is it someone else's? No, they're both mine. But if there's something heavy, If the right hand looks at the left hand and there's something heavy on top, so if they, whatever's on top, if it's hot, then it'll be hot. If it's cold, it'll be cold. If it's wet, then it'll be wet. You know, after a long time, it's going to be heavy. So according to what you know, that's, that's what you'll see. So when someone else is like that, you can see after two hours, you'll be like, that person's um, going to, it's going to be hurting. But if you don't, if you can't see this, then you don't have love. If you don't have love, then you don't, you, if you're neighbor, then you don't know God. 1 John, uh, John chapter 2. If God is inside of you, then you have, to, you have to automatically know. So you can know if God's inside of you or not, whether you love your neighbor. So when you don't know your neighbor, it's because your heart's so small. So if you do forced out repentance completely and your heart's grown, Straight away, when you look at your husband or your wife, you see them as yourself. You become one. So you don't have spouse fighting. So God, he wants to give you unlimited blessings. He says, take it. I've, I've prepared it. I've prepared the, the providence of Jehovah. That's Genesis chapter 22, verse 12 to 14. He says, take it all. Why can't I take it? Because my heart is only as small as a little being. So God wants to give unlimitedly. Why can't I receive? Why can't our, spouse, our spouses receive? Because you're only small as a being. Let's grow it as big as a watermelon, a pumpkin, or a blimp. Let's grow it as big as the whole world. So today, let's grow it. Why doesn't he give blessings? No, God says, take them. He says, surely, take them. Well, why doesn't it work? Because my heart is only as small as a bean. Where am I tied up to? You're already tied up. You're always tied up to what you're not doing well in. Whatever you're not doing well in, that's what you're tied up to. Whatever you're not doing well in, that's what you're tied up to. So that's what we've got to, bring out and cut it off with the blood of Christ. Then we try to hold on to it again. But if you do it to the point of death, so when God gives to us, what does he give to us? He's given us the whole world. Some people say, well, my original cost, I was born with nothing, so I can take nothing. Yes, that's true. 
1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 7 to 8. Yes, I came naked and I'll leave naked. But even though it's not mine, he wants us to take care of, rule over the universe. Let's find, let's read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So all things, what is it we should do? So you and I, after God created us, well, he made us in his image and his likeness. So to refine our image, that is four step repentance. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, let's find that. So we have to find this to be able to rule over the world. If you've done four-step repentance properly, then you have this heart of ruling over the earth. So according to your heart, that's how much he gives you blessings. So the saints that put on first church, now we have to receive blessings. Well, why can't you receive it? Because your heart, you still can't rule over it. Once you're given, you make it into an idol. Once you're given it, you, if that you receive one talent, you bury it into the ground because you don't know how to use it. That's why God won't give to you. Why won't He give me blessings? He's telling you to change your heart. Once you're given it, you're like, oh, it's one talent. I'll just bury it in the ground. No, you have to rule over it. You have to subdue it. But what are you and I like? Some people are like. Oh, no matter, you know, if you learn, if you earn a lot, it's a headache. So I'm just going to earn this much because your heart's like that. That's all he gives to you. It's, it's mostly those people who are, who receive wages. They're like, whether I do this or that, I've only got this money every month. So your heart's like that. That's why he can't give you more. God says you have to rule over the whole earth. Oh, but pastor, I'm just, I'm the, the, the lowest underling there. Even if you're an underling, there's nothing for you to do. No, even though you're at the lo- you're the lowest underling. If your your heart has to be up, has to has to, you have to be able to have the heart of a president. So you need to build up that training. That was Joseph. So if you're with God, that's the heart that God gives you. So when you come to Busan First Church to rule, to take care of and rule over all of the ch- of the church. So what is it that I have to do? You have to live as someone who rules over. Don't be someone who is ruled over. So we found Ecclesiastes chapter five, but we didn't read it. So it's talking about the difference between the heart of a rich person and a poor person. It's also saying there's no satisfaction on this earth. So a rich man says it's mine. The poor man says it's someone else's. So it, the heart is different. Someone who's poor is saying, oh, that's someone else's. And that's why they go past a phone box and kick it. You know, they look at a car and they say, oh, it's someone else's. And so they scratch it. If they said it was theirs, they wouldn't do that. So the way of a rich man and a poor man, their way is different. God wants to give you unlimitedly. But because your heart is like, oh, I'm poor. Oh, this is someone else's. That is someone else's. No, he says, look at every everything as, as mine. He says, rule over and to do all of the earth. So it's all mine. But because you don't have this heart, that's why you can't receive blessings. From today, let's live properly. If God tells us to rule over it, then we have to rule over it. But when you go along the street, what do you do? If it has nothing to do with me, you, don't even, you won't even look at it because it's not mine. So already that's a poverty, a poverty uh, complex. So if there's an accident on the street, that's mine. But if it's, if it's a bit of a headache, you're like, no, no, that's my, that's not mine. Because you say all of it's not mine. Then God's like, well, what's yours? Well, you, well, you're lying at home going, oh, this is comfortable. What's comfortable about burning money? On the TV, I saw someone who was about to die, who was about to become bankrupt. 
I don't know how much cigarettes are. I'm sure they're at least, you know, a dollar. But he said he was saying, I'm going to die because I don't have money. And yet he'd taken out these cigarettes and he's burning money. And I thought, that's how full is he? He's still full that he says he's about to suicide because he has no money and yet he's smoking a cigarette. If it was me, I'd be like, you're still full. You're still burning money. But no one says anything. Otherwise, you know, they wouldn't even be able to put that on TV. But, but you need to say these right words. But he's still full. He says he doesn't have money to buy noodles, and yet he's burning money. You know, smoking. It's so pathetic. So why can't I receive blessings? That's what your desires are. Well, God says, I'll do according to your, your heart. But everything around you, you say, it's not mine. God tells you to rule over everything, over everything but you don't, you don't want to do a thing. So he, he, gives you, he gives you these blankets, but you only fold up one saying, oh, only this is mine. So he's like, okay, well, that's all, all then. No, everything is mine. Everything is mine. So the person next to you, If everything is mine, then you need to know the circumstances of the person next to you. But we don't do that. So let's find Philippians chapter 2 verse 4. We have to fix this. Why can't I receive blessings? God says he'll do according to your heart. He's created all of creation and given it to you. So whether you go along the stairs or along the street or at work, if some co-worker is doing something, when you look at as yours, then you'll help them. But if you're like, oh, even mine, I'm tired, I'm just going to go. I've done, I've done what's mine. That's someone who can't receive blessings. You need to help. Everything is mine. So because you act like that, you think it's a loss? It seems 100% like a loss, but no. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24, it's God who repays. So they, we have this promise. Why do we doubt this? Those people who aren't doing well. You don't even help your spouse. There are people here sitting like this. Oh, bring me some water. You know, if they bring you some water, you're like, oh, go bring me a match. After they bring you a match, you're like, oh, go bring this. There are people like that still here. And so then the wife... You know, they, they're like, oh, they said they wouldn't do that. What a bastard. So then, in the end, you become a dog. You may laugh. Why is it I can't receive blessings? I'm doing the things not to receive blessings. And then the women. If the, if the husbands listen to you, you're like, hey, wash these nappies. Oh, what's happened to the dishes? So if they help you, then just let that be. But, you know, you help them and... Keep helping each other. Become someone who rules over everything. Even if you use uh, an employee, the employee only does as much as the the owner knows. The the demons they know. For example, if you're running a big restaurant, and let's you know this, the trash goes out in these big um, drum containers, but Before that trash goes out, you need to stir with a stick to see if they're, if they're taking out meat wrapped up in plastic in there. And if you do that, then from the kitchen, they're not going to be sending out, you know, meat in a plastic bag in the, in the trash. But if the owner doesn't do that, then they're like, hey, bring a bag. And they, they, they take out beef like that. Then you're like, you can't use... You know, your workers, they can't all be doing false debt repentance. That's why the owner has to know. All things you have to know. So if you don't know, then you can't rule over and subdue. So what is it to know? 
Well, you have to learn, but where can you learn? The whole world is for me. As you go along the street, there's some construction, and you hear this, this metal screeching. Don't just walk past. Have a look and, and say, oh, why is that calling me? And, and they're cutting steel. Well, that means there's something that you need to learn before you go past. So then go ask. They don't ask you for an enrollment fee. They don't ask you for wages. So just learn and go and walk past. That's how I live. Why? What's everything? Everything is for whom? So it seems like you know, but as soon as you hear that screech, you're like, oh, that's noise pollution, and you go off. Because you never come, that's why you heard that big scream, screech, but you end up just nitpicking about the law. And this is why you can't receive blessings because your, your heart's like that. If you saw that, he's saying you use that. You, but you don't get points for this. You don't get points for that. If you see something filthy, you try to avoid it. So you don't even know how to rule over dirty things. Everything, you're a zero. God, he's come to check to, to give you blessings. But you have no points anywhere. When you heard the metal screech, that was zero. You just cursed saying your ears hurt. You looked at something filthy and you're like, oh, and, and you're zero. So you have no worthiness to receive blessings. If everything is mine, would you just, would you just leave? When you saw something filthy, you know, you'd be like, you'd investigate the source. Who did that? And then you would clear it away. So you need to learn. You need to learn everything. Even today, at this time, through the person next to you, he wants me to receive blessings for your heart to change. But we can't give thanks for this. Oh, this person's filthy. That person's clean. You do, you say all these wrong things. Oh, that person's wearing a mink. Oh, but I'm only wearing weasel. So you start to get envy and some jealousy. You have to rule over and subdue the world as an owner. But without, without this, you can't receive blessings. Your heart is one of, oh, I'm not an owner. Let's change it to a heart of an owner. I am an owner. I'm an owner. It's when you do forced at repentance that your heart changes. You know, the curtains at our church, they change all the time, but you don't know. If you're an owner, you know when it's time to change it. But a customer doesn't know. They don't know when it's time to change it. But an owner knows. Already that person is loyal and according to their heart, they receive blessings. So the The saints at Pusan First Church, from today, who is it that changes our hearts? It's only God. If you have sin, you know, you and I, our hearts are the same. People in the world, their hearts, it seems like they're doing well, but then they don't. Or the whole lives, they don't do well. But if we wash our hearts with the blood of Christ, then it's a heart of doing well. Everything is mine. So when I was looking down from the apartment, There was a brick there. No one was clearing it away because it wasn't, you know, they're all like, it's not mine. But without me realizing, I picked it up and put it over there. And I was like, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Because I'm doing four-step repentance without me realizing, instead of saying, oh, I should do this, just automatically, it was mine. The heart of, of everything being mine. The reason why you can't receive blessings is because you say it's someone else's. That's why you don't do well. So this heart can only come from false debt repentance. If I do false debt repentance properly, you know, am I someone who can receive blessings or not? It's when you say it's mine. Let's say you're given a building. You know, if it's, if it's mine, how are you going to look after it? People who don't know, they're ruined. They'll, they'll waste it all. So when parents, a child who is not worthy, the parents, you know, work so hard to earn, to earn this inheritance, but the children, they end up wasting it all. And when money leaves, they, it doesn't just leave, it takes a, a, a life with it, a person with it. And that's why these children, they, they end up ruining their lives. They spend their lives suffering as they waste this money. So worldly education should be teaching us how to rule over it, but it doesn't work. It ruins themselves and others. Well, um, 
that's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19 to 20. But, but we have to become someone who can rule over, who can subdue. Let's change our hearts. So at this time, we're going we're gonna to change it. So who is, who is your wife? Who is your husband? Who, who are your children? Who are your parents? Oh, only these people. No, then you can't do well. All elderly people are my parents. You need to look rightly, correctly. So for you to become better than me, that's what God's Word says. So in order to give you this, you know, even if you're older than me, or if you're old or young, if you start now, you can do better than me. A, a train that's going 100 kil- kilometers, and let's say you're running 100 kilometers, then if you add that on, then it's 105, kil- you're running at 5 kilometers, and then you add that together, it's 105 because of acceleration. So you can do better than Pastor Park, John chapter 14, verse 12. God will make it happen. So your heart to say the world is mine, have that heart. Then, you know, if Korea's money goes to some other country, so what? If some other country's money comes to us, so what? Because there's no loss for me. So you don't need to be angry or curse. But if my heart's limited to some small area in a country, then then you begin to curse. You can't receive blessings. God wants me to rule over the whole universe. So in order to do this, he gives us wisdom and knowledge when? When we repent. Let's find Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. So let's find this and then end, end this. Finish this. So when you listen to this, it seems like nothing. If you don't repent, it won't become mine. Oh, why is it our family doesn't receive blessings when God says he'll give it to us? Because it's your heart. You do the things not to receive blessings. You know, if you keep, even for your neighbor, if you keep helping them soon, as much as you help them, your blessings grow. Your house grows. Your livelihood grows. You keep growing. As much as you help, you grow. But you and I, we can't do this. You know what? I'm just going to have my spoonful and I'm just going to lie down. That's what's comfortable. Well, God's like, okay, well then. So then he just reduces you to that. And in the end, all it is, is that's your grave. So you look at people, they spend their whole lives and they, they're just lying on that one mat. And even at mealtime, they don't get up. Even though their food's rotting, they won't eat it. How can that be a rich person? God wants to give you unlimitedly. He says, take it. Why is it there's, my, my pockets are empty? Because of my thoughts. Let's live properly. God gives unlimitedly. Why can't I receive? Because of my thoughts, my thinking. You say, oh, it's not mine, it's someone else's. When you say it's someone else's, Oh, so when you say it's mine, God makes it mine. If you say it's someone else's, God makes it someone else's. But when you say it's mine out of greed, God doesn't give it to you. It's when you find my image and you can rule over and subdue. By four-step repentance, if you find my image, then you can rule over everything. If you've done four-step repentance properly, then blessings come. Then customers come to your business. Even when you go to your, your business, you know, some people, if they have nowhere to go, they'll at least go as a housekeeper. But when you say it's someone else's house, then you have jealousy. So you end up sinning. Your bones rot, so you get disease. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. But when you say, even this house is mine, but my friend's just living in it. So if it's my house, what is it I need to do? When you act like that, that's when that friend respects you. So if it's mine, then you'll clear things away without having your pride hurt. And you'll fix things. And that's how much you receive blessings. 
So the owner may run the business, but it's me that gets the service. Why? Because I look after that house as if it's mine. I say, oh, you should fix this, you should fix that. And then I go and do, I help out as much as I can. And so that person, when I come, they treat me as an owner. So they look after it, but the actual owner is me. Because in the Lord's name, I get to rule over and subdue this earth. That's how you should live. That's when he pours out the blessings. So, for example, you're selling cabbage. If you go to a fruit and vegetable market, you know, all people are selling. But if you look at someone else's goods and just look at it as someone else's, you can't receive blessings. If you look at it as mine and you help them unload it, then already you get a deeper relationship with that person. Already the way you, you deal in business is different. But, you know, but if you see someone bringing some goods and you don't help and you just go, hey, and you just throw some trash at it, then they're going to say, what a filthy bastard. God, he's given it all for me to rule over. Let's have this heart. Don't forget it. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of Jehovah is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. Let's read it again. The fear of Jehovah is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. So fearing Jehovah, forced at repentance, one heart, one way. What is that? The beginning of. It's the beginning of knowledge, what you didn't know to know. When you do forced at repentance, how is it you know? If you're doing forced at repentance thoroughly, things I have never heard or seen. Let's say skills about TV, about a television. You know, God, when he's like, you need to know that to receive blessings, then you keep seeing broken TVs. Everywhere I go, you meet people who fix TVs. Why? You have to know that and look at that and know that in order to receive these blessings. But you're like, oh, why am I so unfortunate? Why am I always bumping into these things? And then you just kick it aside. Oh, everywhere I go. You know, I. why is it I keep seeing people with these sacks and you say, oh, how unlucky for me. But if you can, if you help as much as you can, so as you're helping and if you're repenting, you know, when this car is bringing in these goods, oh, that driver talks about something and tells you, you know, where they're bringing it, and they tell you how to earn money. So you get this knowledge. So when you're showing this, you're like, oh, my road was blocked before with that. Oh, but it's blocked again. And then how unfortunate you spit. Oh, everywhere I go, why am I being, why am I being blocked with this? you know, bad luck. That's the way you live when when it's blessings. So don't do that now, but when you do forced repentance and you fear, then he gives you knowledge. You don't know, but every time these sacks move back and forth, money is moving back and forth, but you don't even know this. As you help with the sacks, you know, the driver, God moves his heart. And so, you know, they'll say, oh, and they want to tell you something. But if you're not repenting properly, you're like, oh, this is so hard. Yes, you know, I'm forcing myself to help you. But the driver will tell you, you know what? If you get this, each sack, if you get this from that place, each sack is worth this much. So that's knowledge. They tell you that. Then if you go and buy a, a, a truckload of that, then you end up getting money. Everywhere you go, he blocks you this way, he blocks you that. And each time you're like, oh, it's such bad luck. And you spit. After you do four-step repentance, some people say, oh, after doing four-step repentance, I end up getting more work. And my spouse relationship is worse. After you do four step repentance, if you have more problems, it's for you to repent more. If you repent more, it's for you to receive more blessings. But we say, oh, we're not doing well. This is bad. This is, you know, unfortunate. And then you say, give me blessings. God's saying, take them. So from now on, everything is mine. That, you know, that 
a waste spilt here. That's mine. But you're, you're like this. But if it's spilt in my yard, if it was me that had spilt it, then I'd clear it. You know, God gives you knowledge there. He, gives, he opens up a way for you to receive blessings. So, see, everything is mine. According to your heart, he will give to you. So, see, everything is mine and rule over everything. And so let's receive blessings. Let's do more well. Let's do more well. Now we will do well. Now we will do well. Let's receive $7 million. Those people who can't say amen, you're like, oh, is he really going to give? God will give even more. He says, take it. When you go to work, and your business isn't doing well, and you say, oh, I'm always getting this unfortunate person come. That's their blessings. Say, if you say it's mine, if someone brings you a problem, say it's mine. So when you hear about the problems, you'll hear how to receive blessings. So we don't have a bad economy. Through that, we receive knowledge. It's when you know that you can succeed. So let's, when you know that's where answers come out. So let's do well. Whatever happens, as long as you're fearing, then knowledge will come. This is what you should do. That, that knowledge comes. So let's surely do well and let's pass it to our children. We believe we have to make our children receive blessings. So it's starting for me to do well and to pass it to my children. Now we will receive blessings because there is no lie with God. So every time you have a problem, that's mine. Let's say, that's mine. That doesn't mean you go take off with someone's money and end up in, in prison. Even if they take it to their house, it's still mine. So let's surely do this. Oh, pastor, I'm just a, I just receive a wage. Even if you receive a wage, if you're doing it as my as mine, then a customer will come and give you knowledge. So if you just write down that knowledge, oh, this is a way for me to receive a certain amount per month. So you know this. And if you treat something else as mine, you also hear something else that someone tells you. And then in one month, you can end up with hundreds and thousands, millions of dollars. God teaches you it all. That's how he wants you to receive blessings. But you're like, oh. You know, even as you do your own work, you're like, oh, I wish I could get a free lunch. No. Treat everything as mine. Then blessings will be poured out. In order to receive these blessings, that's why we do forced repentance, to change my heart to receive blessings. Let's all receive. No matter what happens, see it as mine. If some problem happens, treat it as mine. You know, you know, take off your jacket and and always make sure you um, put your social security card underneath. And so God is the source of all blessings. He gives you knowledge to receive blessings. Let's all become victorious. Let's all pray. Lord, what is my heart like now? Am I still nitpicking over what's mine? Am I still grumbling, complaining with, with a tiny heart? Am I still worrying and, and anxious, which is to belong to evil? May we see the whole world as mine and rule over it. Whatever country I go to, even there, I'm ruling over that. Let's give us, may we have a heart of thanksgiving and, and, may, and with the knowledge that you give, may we receive blessings. May we all be saints who give you much glory in our hearts. Let's get rid of that heart of loose change, but to have that big heart of the whole universe's mind and to receive unlimited blessings. It's because we don't know that you don't give. It's without knowledge that we're ruined. But may, if we're fearing God when we're doing false step repentance, whatever problem, may there be workings where where we have knowledge. When we don't know why something's happened, it's by forced get repentance that God will give us the knowledge. This is the blessing I want to give you. 
So when our family, we can't solve a problem and everyone feels frustrated. Wherever we are, may we do four-step repentance so that my family receives knowledge so that our problems become answers. May we be so into power. May, this, may our children be like this. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. And now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the unlimited love of God, and the guidance, protection, and realizations of the Holy Spirit. Every time we have a problem, instead of saying, what bad luck, what a headache, and trying to avoid it, but to see it as mine, to do four-step repentance. Why has this happened? To receive that knowledge. And within that knowledge, to know, to, to receive blessings, those, those hearts that are determined, to do this. May you be with them now and forevermore. In the Lord's name I bless. Amen.